In this video, we're going to talk about the direct comparison test. So let's say if we have the sequence b sub n, and it's greater than or equal to a sub n, which is greater than 0. So b sub n, we can describe it as the big sequence, and a sub n is the small sequence. And so the basic idea behind the direct comparison test, it says this, at least the first statement. If the series, if the big series converges, then the small series will converge as well. And then the second statement, if the small series diverges, then the big series diverges as well. And so that's the basic idea behind the direct comparison test. Now the reverse statement is inconclusive. So I can't say this. If the small series converges, then the big series converge. That's not the case. The big series, it may converge or it may diverge. So it's inconclusive. And the same is true for the reverse statement of statement number two. So I can't say that if the big series diverge, then the small series will diverge as well. That's not the case. So just keep that in mind. Now let's analyze this concept with a graph. So let's say if the big series converges, so it becomes horizontal over time. What can you say about the small series? Well, a sub n is less than b sub n, so then it has to converge as well. And so that's the basic idea behind a direct comparison test. Now, let's say if the small series converges. The big series, does it have to converge or can it diverge? Well, it can do both. It may converge, we don't know, or it may diverge. It's inconclusive. And so this graph can help you to see the concept behind the direct comparison test. So if the big series converges, the small series has to converge. And if the small series diverges, then the big series have to diverge. So make sure you understand that. Now let's work on some examples. So consider this problem. Let's say if we have the series from 1 to infinity of 1 over 4 plus 3 to the n. Will this series converge or diverge? So what can we compare this expression to? Which term is insignificant? When n becomes very large, the 4 is insignificant. So let's drop the 4. If we do that, we're going to get this. Now, which term is larger? This one or this one? Notice that the denominator of this fraction is greater than this one. 4 plus 3 to the n is greater than 3 to the n. As you increase the denominator of a fraction, the value of the whole fraction goes down. So because the denominator has a higher value, the whole fraction has a lower value, which means that 1 over 3 to the n is greater than 1 over 4 plus 3 to the n. So this is the big function, and this is the small function. So we can describe this as a sub n and b sub n. So this series is going to be smaller than this one. Now what can you tell me about this particular series? What type of series is it? Now we can rewrite 1 over 3 to the n as 1 over 3 raised to the n. Notice that that is a geometric series with a common ratio of 1 over 3. And if the common ratio is less than 1, what do you know about the geometric series? 
the geometric series is convergent. Now, if the larger series is convergent, what can we conclude about the smaller series? The smaller series must be convergent as well. So by the direct comparison test, we know that this series converges. Now let's try another example. Determine the convergence or the divergence of this series. Let's say if it's 1 over n cubed plus 5. So feel free to pause the video and try this problem. So when n becomes very large, the 5 is insignificant relative to n cubed. So we can compare this series to this one. 1 over n to the third power. Now, which sequence is greater? 1 over n to the third plus 5 or 1 over n cubed? Now, n to the third plus 5 is greater than n cubed. Because the denominator of this fraction is larger, the value of the whole fraction must be smaller. So 1 over n cubed plus 5 has to be less than 1 over n cubed. So we can put less than or equal to. So therefore, this is the small series, and this one is the big series. So what do we know about this series? What type of series do we have? This is a p-series. And so p is equal to 3. Now, whenever p is greater than 1, the series converges. So in that case, if the big series converges, then the small series must converge based on a direct comparison test. Let's try this example. So we have the series from 1 to infinity, 1 divided by 4 plus the cube root of n. So use the direct comparison test to determine if it's going to converge or diverge. So when n becomes large, the 4 is insignificant. So we can write this expression. And so this series is going to be bigger than the first one. So this is the b of n, and this is our a of n. Now, we can rewrite this series like this. The cube root of n is n to the 1 third. So basically, we have another p-series. But this time, p is equal to 1 third. So therefore, because p is less than or equal to 1, we have a divergent series. So what can we say about this series? Is it convergent or divergent? So if the big series diverges, will the small series diverge as well? No, it's inconclusive. So remember what the direct comparison test says. And that is, if the small series diverges, then the big series diverges as well. But if the big series diverges, the small series, it doesn't have to diverge. It can converge. So in this case, the direct comparison test is inconclusive. You may have to use the limit comparison test, which I'll talk about that in another video. Now let's try another problem. So let's say it's 2 to the n over 7 to the n plus 8. So use the direct comparison test to determine if this series will converge or diverge. So what should we compare it to? All we need to do is get rid of the 8. And so we're going to get this expression. Now, Relative to this fraction, we've increased the denominator by 8 on the left. So anytime you increase the denominator of a fraction, the value of the whole fraction goes down. So therefore, the series on the left is less than the series on the right. So this is our a sub n, and this is 
our b sub n. So now let's rewrite this expression. So let's change it to 2 over 7 raised to the n. So now it looks like a geometric series. And the common ratio is 2 over 7. So the absolute value of r is less than 1, which means that the geometric series converges. Now, according to the direct comparison test, if the big series converges, then the small series converges as well. And so that's the answer. Here's another problem that you could try. So it's going to be natural log of n over n. Will that series converge or diverge? And what should we compare it to? So when n goes to infinity, n increases faster than the natural log of n. So the n on the bottom is significant. What can we compare ln n to? The natural log of n is greater than 1 whenever n is equal to or greater than 3. For instance, ln 2 is 0.693, so that's not going to work. ln 3 is 1.0986. So when n is 3 or more, this statement becomes true. So this is going to be the big series, and this one is associated with the small series. So this is a harmonic series, or p series, where p is 1. And if p is equal to 1, then the series is divergent. Now, if the small series is divergent, what can we conclude about the big series? That means the big series has to be divergent. And so that's it for this example. Let's try two more examples. So let's say we have n plus 5 divided by n squared. Go ahead and try that problem. So you can clearly see that we need to get rid of the 5. So this is going to be n over n squared. Now, the numerator of that fraction is bigger than the numerator for the second fraction on the right. n plus 5 is greater than n. And if you increase the value of the numerator of a fraction, the value of the whole fraction goes up. So therefore, this series is bigger than the one on the right. So this is going to be our a sub n. I mean, not a sub n, but b sub n. And this is the smaller series, a sub n. So we can reduce this series to this one. It's going to be 1 over n. So once again, we have the divergent harmonic series with a p-value of 1. Now, if the small series diverges, then the big series has to diverge as well, based on the comparison tests. And so that's it for that example. So this is going to be the last example for this video. And we're going to have 1 divided by the square root of n to the 4 plus 5. So go ahead and try that. So let's begin by removing the 5. So this becomes 1 divided by the square root of n to the 4. So this fraction has a denominator with a higher value, which means the value of the fraction is lower. And so this is going to be the bigger series. So that's associated with b sub n, and this is associated with a sub n. Now the square root of n to the 4, that's n squared. So we have the p series, where p is 2. And so if p is greater than 1, we know that the p series will be convergent. So if the bigger series converges, then the smaller series will also converge. So these are just some basic examples. I know there's some harder ones out there, but I really want you to master the basic concepts 
behind the direct comparison tests.